In this video, we'll cover the injection recipe entry mode for injection processors. And I have here the touchscreen that comes with the uh, TrueBlend SB2 blender, and we have it hooked over an Ethernet cable to this touchscreen. So, for demonstration purposes in this video, uh, we'll place this aside and use the touchscreen. This is the home screen for the SB2 TrueBlend blender. Uh, which indicates the various components inside the system. Component 1, Component 2, Component 3, Component 4. This graphic in the center is the batch hopper, which indicates that presently it's got just less than a pound in it. And this graphic is the mixer. We have the basic operator keys on this page, accessing alarms, accessing totals, changing the recipe, placing the system into automatic, or stopping the system, and we have a more button here that which we'll cover later in other videos that gets us to set up and configuration things. So to enter the recipe, again for injection processors, the operator accesses the recipe page by pressing the recipe button. It brings up the recipe page and at this particular screen we have all the material types set to natural, which you can see across the top. The, the blender is stopped so the recipe that it's executing is shown on this line. It's actually shown as zero because the system is stopped. And the new recipe that we'd like to execute, I have 60% here, 30, 5, and 5. We have a green light here that's indicating the totals of all the naturals adds to 100. Keep that in mind as we move through this because the naturals always have to add to 100. So let's place the system into automatic. You can see the green light comes on under automa over automatic here and the red light over stop is gone. The system has started making batches and you can see that it's indicating the values that it's done for the batch. Okay? If we return to the home screen, you press the home button at the bottom. It returns to the graphic that we talked about originally and again you can see your set points here shown in blue for the recipe. The material type, again, and then the actual value that it learned as it dosed the material. Okay. The batch is indicating it's doing about a one pound batch. So if we watch, it starts with the minor ingredients first, doing those both, then to the next largest percentage, finishing with the largest percentage last, and it creates about a one pound batch. The arrow turns on indicating the batch hopper is dumped out. The green light on the mixer comes on indicating the mixer is, is turning. And this yellow bar indicates that the proximity sensor inside the mixer has been covered. After it's mixed it, the arrow appears here indicating that the, the gate at the bottom of the mixer is opened and dump the mixed material into the process. This value here shows the operational rate of the blender uh, created by the demand of the downstream process. In this particular case, just over 200 pounds per hour. So let's return to the recipe screen and see what we do when we want to change the material types. I'll do some examples and show you the effect of that on the way the batch is created. So if we go back to the recipe screen and we can review the, the operational changes under options. We can change material types under options. So we press the options button here and the options screen for recipe comes up and this is where we select the type of material that we want. Regrind, keep in mind, is always fed first. So we'll change this component perhaps to regrind. We have other choices here for injection processors where you can select additive batch or additive natural. We'll return to this. For now we'll just select regrind. We'll review the other options later. So I've renamed, component two is gonna be a regrind component. Go back. At this point, I've only modified what I want the blender to do. It's presently executing the recipe that I entered originally. It doesn't change this to a regrind until I hit automatic and commit it. But right now I have a warning. The warning's telling me that the naturals do not add up to 100. Again, the naturals always have to add to 100. So what we'll do is we'll modify this one for demonstration purposes. That would be 90. And we have the green light here that the naturals are all added to 100 and you have 30% of the batch will be regrind. 
we can commit this recipe by pushing automatic here. And let's return to the home screen and see how that affects the operation of the batch. So on the home screen, you can see that the regrind is always fed first. It puts in 30% of the batch on the regrind, and then it does the minor ingredients, finishing with the major ingredient. Again, the one pound batch is made. Okay. So let's return to the recipe and say we want to change uh, one of these components to something other than natural. So returning to the recipe screen, if we wanted to change this one, for instance, to a, a different type of material, we would go to the options button. Again, we're on recipe options screen. Go to component three. Um, and we'll choose additive natural here. Okay, we go back. And on this particular page, again, we have the warning because the naturals don't add to 100. So I will satisfy that here. Okay, now the naturals add to 100. And what this is going to do when we execute it by pressing automatic, it's going to dose the regrind first. It's going to dose uh, the natural next, the additive natural next, and then this natural and this natural. So let's put it into automatic. And we'll go back to the home screen and, and see what effect this has on the way the batch is made. Okay, again, you can see on component three, we changed it to an additive natural. So it did the regrind first. It's doing the additive natural next, starting with the next minor ingredient that's a natural and finishing with the major ingredient that is a natural. What this is doing is when the batch size, in this particular case, is one pound, the regrind goes in at one third of the pound. The natural is dosed in as a percentage of the rest of these, as opposed to a percentage of the total. This is a common uh, recipe entry method for injection processors, and this is how it's executed. So the final option for adding materials into the system uh, we'll do on component four. We can return to the recipe screen, go into options, and we'll uh, select for component four. We'll change it from a natural to additive batch. So now you can see we have all four material types in this particular blend. We have a natural, we have a regrind, we have an additive natural, and an additive batch. So return back to the main recipe screen. And again, you can see we have the warning again that the naturals do not add to 100. So we'll change that. The only natural remaining is this one. It's 100. Again, 30% regrind. 5% will be 5% of this. So this has actually become a ratio now. It's a, it's a 100 to 5 ratio. So for every 100 parts of natural, we're going to put in 5 parts of additive natural. The batch is set to 5%. And the way the batch additive batch works is it puts 5% of the entire amount of the whole batch, including the regrind. On an additive batch uh, situation, you may have a particular type of additive that once it's received some heat history uh, in the process, it's no longer chemically active for the system. So even though it was in the product when you uh, created it, once you've reground it, the properties of that particular additive have been lost. So when you put regrind back into the process, you have to put that additive ingredient back into the system and add it in relationship to the entire amount of material in there, including the regrind. So let's commit that by pressing automatic. And then we can return to the home screen here. And we'll watch and see the effect of the dosing order here. So the batch is completed. It's dumped out. And it starts with the regrind, of course, doing that first. It started with the additive natural, then does the natural, and does the batch additive batch after that. Because again, this particular amount is in relationship to all three of these. 
So it has to dose all three of these before it knows exactly how much is in there. Then the computer calculates how much exactly it should put in for this. So that's the basic uh, P's and Q's of the injection process or entry method covering all recipe entry methods and all material types. We'll see you in other videos where we explain other features of the system and uh, cover additional items.